Good morning, everyone. June 26, 2022. Right now, I'm just um, doing orders, pay dirt orders. Uh, Heather comes back today, so this is the last time I'll have to do this, at least until she leaves again. It's fine. I kind of enjoy doing pay dirt once in a while. It's kind of just mindless. You stand there, you do it, you do your orders. And now, since I pretty much blew through all of the inventory, we still have a few bags left. These are impossibles. These are the only thing that are not sold out. Everything else is sold out. So I'm going to start making more pay dirt bags of everything, including the Discovery uh, bag. So we'll get a chance to actually use that here. Uh, a lot of the gold nuggets are still here. A lot of the big ones too, the big 10 grammer. That one here is the, the biggest nugget I currently have on the site. So I'm going to finish up the orders. I'm going to take those over to the UPS store. And then I'm going to start making bags. So that is pretty much going to take up probably most of my day. So I may as well make a bigger mess because I have to clean up anyway. So maybe I will just finish this job, get that shelf up there. And then that way when I'm making bags... I can actually just put them directly into the shelf when Heather when Heather comes back. We'll we'll see if she approves or not. But um, again, like like I said yesterday in yesterday's video, if it doesn't work out, we got a whole wood shop to build anything we need. So I guess um, we'll work on this first. All right, making a little bit of progress here. I'm going to keep it at four partitions for the mini crumb bags. And then we're gonna do one row for impossible, one row for expert, and then two rows for every other product. So there's six more products. So um, basically what I'm doing, these are loose as you can see, even though these are this is 5 eighths plywood and this router is a 5 eighths bit, the plywood itself is just a little bit under 5 eighths. So I'll, until I glue that down and tack it in there with some brad nails and stuff, it's gonna move. But basically, um, I designed it so that everything's going to stand up on its own, right? And then um, it's just a lot better to have it like that. That way I can easily count it and store it in there. I don't think I'm going to go with the spring pushing stuff forward all the time. The only reason why is because whenever I'm loading it up, I'm gonna have to load from the back so we could pull for, uh, old inventory from the front. And if there's always a spring pushing, it's gonna be a pain to always be loading it up. I guess I could set something back here like a stop to keep the spring from going while I'm loading it. But for now, this is the way we're gonna do it. Yeah, just getting started here. As far as the dust goes, I have a temporary solution. I got the Festool hose uh, over to my Milwaukee. It's it's a completely different size. I don't have an adapter, so I just taped it on there. And when I turn this on, it's going to be sucking probably about, hopefully 50% or more of the dust. So we'll continue on this. Well, my Festool attachment didn't work as I expected with this little uh, thing. The battery actually died on it. Um, and it wasn't really working that great anyway. So, um, right now we have pretty much the, what it's going to look like. The only reason I didn't put this one in is because when I routed this channel, one of my screw holes was right underneath it. So I have to leave this one out so I could screw it back up to the wall, back to the, um, to the support beam there. And then we'll glue and tack this one in once it's on, once it's on the wall. But all the others are glued and tacked in, and everything should stand up on its own. Well, I mean, they can. These, these bags aren't like, they don't have like feet on them. They're just flat bags. So, that, you know, if they don't stand up perfectly on their own, they can still lean back against the wall. But yeah, I think that'll work. So we have one, two, three, Four compartments for the mini bags, one for impossible, expert, strike, strike, blast, blast, beginner, beginner, discover, discovery, right? So 
pr pretty much two for each, except for the impossible and the expert, and then four for the crumbs. All right, let's put it up on the wall and we'll call that job done. And then we can start making pay dirt bags. All right, it seems to be working pretty good. We can fit about 20 per row, so we can store about 80 bags of the mini uh, crumbs up here. So that's working out really good. Um, I'm just adding gold here. We're gonna do a bonus nugget here. So let's, uh, let's see what that one weighs. Okay. We'll go ahead and, whoops, I don't wanna give out the uh, serial number on that one. That's a keeper. What was the number again? I have to record this. One, three, one, okay. Oops. Okay, it seems to work all right. It seems to look all right. We have a whole bunch of impossible bags. Um, we're just gonna either send a whole bunch to Amazon or we can have a sale. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll do a sale tonight. If there is a sale, I'll put the discount code here somewhere. And we're probably gonna need to make some more crumb bags and we have plenty of room for that. Um, I'm still working on, I didn't even do orders yet. I only did like what we got overnight. So, I mean, it's already, it's already quarter to four. So pretty much all I did today was make this goofy shelf and um, make bags pay dirt. So I'm going to go ahead and I, I really need to get to the post office. I want these to go out. So I'm going to go ahead and take that over and then we'll finish up. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do all the rest of the orders, take them all over at once, and then I'll get some breakfast. I didn't eat yet, so I got to get something to eat and then we can start our work day. So here's my little container for making my impossible bags, mixing all the black sand and tungsten. And well, actually, I put the tungsten in individually, but the garnets and... Pyrite and all that stuff gets mixed in here. Add water, mix it up. This is my little gemstone thing. Um, yeah. This workbench is working exactly how I want it to. The only thing I think I could improve is having the bucket of dirt up above and putting a valve on the bottom where I can turn it and then the dirt would just pour Instead of using a shovel, I'd like to have like pre-weighed amounts falling down into the bags. Uh, it probably wouldn't obviously be that big bin. It would be like a smaller tub and then have some sort of a hose that comes down that I could just turn it. And each time I turn it, eight ounces of material goes into the thing. Have another one for black sand for the expert bags and set it to strike, set it to expert because the strike and expert bags get different amounts of black sand obviously the expert gets more strike only gets a little bit and the impossible i don't mind mixing this up in the little tub here and make an impossible pie there so all right i just wanted to mention that before i forgot to say how good it actually works it's all good all right i'm gonna finish up these last orders go to the thing get some food and then we can come check, back check is it working it is working all right let's go ahead and let's see here window capture i'm not even set i'm not even ready here to answer comments but let's go ahead and do so all right we are on the right page bear with me here sorry about that there we go rick havoc the soda thing made me think if you make it made a ramp the bags would gravity feed and you wouldn't have to devise a spring mechanism. Uh, yeah, a ra yeah, a ramp would work. Gravity would work. I thought about that too, having like a curved shelf. That would not only make it um, automatically feed down, but it would also uh, give more room to add more bags. So I did think of that, um, but I wasn't prepared to build that today. I think the way it is isn't terrible. And it's not a big deal reaching back. It's not like it's super far back either. So it's not that hard to reach. The spring mechanism was just a, a silly idea. But um, it could probably work either way. But thank you for the input, Rick. Nick Molnar says, that looks great. 
you even said you wanted it be below, but I understand things change, so you can make it easier to do. It is a never-ending, everything always changes. You got that right. Yeah, even with... um. You know, everything, everything you do, not just wood shop or, or stuff like that, or writing music or dr painting or any of that stuff. You're going in it, at least me, I'll go into something thinking, okay, I want something this way, and it'll turn out that way. But then when it's done, it's like, I'm going to change it up and make it even better, you know? Thanks for the comment, Nick. Rain and Thunder says, eight at 846, I was thinking the same thing. Let's see what, what. Uh, Rain and Thunder's talking about. I got a wood shop to build anything we want. Oh, that's true. I do have a wood shop. We can build anything we want. So if you have any suggestions, if you want to see any projects, I'll be happy to consider them. We'll say that. Larry says the shelves are cool. Like you said, it's easier to know what you need when you have all the stuff in the room. Yeah, that's for sure. Because, you know, in, in my head, it seems like we, we have a whole lot less than what we really have. And then you bring all this stuff in, and then it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I need a place for that. Like today in there, it's still not done, but it's it's getting closer. Um, but I want to build a couple more. Well, not – what I want to do is I want – okay, so we get our bubble wrap in big rolls, right? I want to – um, I want to mount that on the ceiling, like at the UPS. Have you ever been to a UPS store and you look in the back room and they have that big roll of bubble wrap back there that they pull down? That's how. That's what I want to set up in here. That way, it's out of the way, and and it's you can pull it down and just rip it off as you need it. So, yeah, that works for me. Um, oh, also in the in this video, I was talking about getting the mail done and get, getting over to the UPS store and all this. It's Sunday, like there's no mail on Sunday. So I did all that for not really nothing. And now Heather doesn't have to do it later on, but glad to have it done. It's fun. You know, I get, I get uh, focused on stuff and I'll just do it. It doesn't matter. Um, David Simon looks like people have let, have let you know about the toggle bolts, but the greens from the garlic are called garlic scapes use them like garnish or cooking they have garlic onion taste oh definitely yeah we'll certainly do that yeah toggle bolts that's what they're called i totally i couldn't i was thinking carriage bolts because that's what i was looking for. i was looking for carriage bolts but i couldn't find the right size and then i found those and i was like oh what the heck are these things called David Simon, bit late to the show, just got back from camping trip with the family, but for some strange reason, I have a hankering for crab. Nice to see the tools, hard at work, get in the shop, set the way you like it. I agree, David. Aaron, solid video, keep them coming. Thanks, will do. Shane Prothero is here, LOL, saw your gold rush nugget bucket under your shelf, I have the same one. Works okay, but you do lose a little fine gold with it. I've tested my tailings in the bottom of the bucket to find out if I was losing anything and found a few specs. Yeah, it's a pretty cool idea, the way it works. Basically, if you don't know what the Gold Rush Nugget Bucket is, um, just type in uh, Clash Gold Rush Nugget Bucket. I made a video reviewing how it works. It's a pretty interesting process. It's... um. It, it works off fluid dynamics like any other pro piece of prospecting gear, but it's pretty unique how they do it. The only thing I didn't like about it, it's all plastic, and um, you need to have water constantly running. Like if you could set it under a small waterfall or have some kind of a pump with water pumping into it, it would work a lot better because when you're using that thing, it's like you shovel in dirt, and then you also have to dump in water. It's not – I mean, you just – constantly having to do stuff so it's a lot of work using that thing but it does work thanks for the comment dude hamilton gemstones is coming together it'll be cool watching you put together guitars let me know if you need faceted stones for them i think a guitar would look bling with some what would be awesome yeah i think so too that would be pr pretty awesome i appreciate that hamilton gemstones uh that's awesome yeah keep in touch man King Loopy, looks like your operation and so is coming along and nice. Yes, it is. Thank you for that. Brad Wigton, I can 3D print a adapters for your dust system. Oh, he's talking about the uh, the Festool going to the Milwaukee or to the air compressor. 
Dude, the um, the air compressor is a four inch. So um, I don't know if you can get a four inch to. I don't know what the size of the Fest tool is. It's probably about a t one and a half inch. I want to say. Uh, I'll let you know. Comment again and remind me, and I'll let you know what size it is. If you're interested in actually doing that for me, that'd be pretty awesome. I appreciate the offer there. Fragnet says, everything looks great that you're doing for your gold business. My question is, where did you store all that stuff before you moved into a separate building? One could imagine that you, you're simply just dumping stuff into bags and sending them out, but you're showing us what's involved. Makes me appreciate all the hard work you guys put into it. Thanks for letting us in to see the inner workings of your gold business. I have no idea how you have the energy to have your hands working on so many different things at once. Thank you for the comment, Fragnet. And um, what we, where did we store that stuff before we moved? So we had um, a bedroom. Basically, if you've seen my um, pretty much all of my videos from like 2019, 2020, and 2021 for the past three years, all those videos, the intros where I'm speaking to the camera like this, in that room, that was like half of a small bedroom, and the other half of the small bedroom was the pay dirt business. So basically it was just a desk and like shelves going up with bags of dirt, and we had tubs full of pay dirt and labels, and everything was just in one half of a room. We just integrated everything vertically because space was a bit is has always been a big issue up until I, I purchased this home and got everything moved into this shop. So that was like the main reason we needed this big shop was not only for my guitar, my luthier shop, but also to have I figured, you know, if I'm gonna partition it off, I might as well might like this is three rooms now. Originally, it was going to be just two, just the guitar the guitar shop and the pay dirt room. But then as I was building, again, it's like, oh, I could do it better. I'll turn this into a YouTube studio so it's not in the house, which is fine. Either, like, now we have an empty bedroom in the house, which is great because I thought about doing an Airbnb, but there's no more permits available in Colorado for Airbnb. So now it's just an empty bedroom, but we'll figure out, I'm sure it'll probably be a scuba room is probably what it's going to end up being like maybe probably for my firearms and for scuba gear and like other hobbies that, you know, who knows? I don't know. I, I am definitely going to remodel that third bedroom though. Sorry for uh, going off on a tangent. Um, thanks for letting us see the inner workings of the gold business. Yeah. It's not just putting dirt in a bag. Um, there's a lot that goes into, um, you know, everything from coming up with the idea, you know, everybody thinks, oh, I can just throw dirt in a bag, put gold in it and sell it. Well, how many people say it and then actually go through with it? And then once they go through with it, do they just actually put dirt in a bag and gold in a bag and sell it? Or do they go to the extent of making, you know, doing graphic design, coming up with a logo, finding a printer for all those labels, doing advertising, and make and and then engineering seven individual products with guarantee you know gar the guaranteed minimum amount of gold thing i'm not i i think there are other companies that did it before me i'm not saying i'm the first at it but i do know that that's like the first thing that you want to look for when purchasing a, a pay dirt product make sure there's a guaranteed minimum amount and then it's up to you to figure out oh is it worth it so say you pay you know, $50 for a half a gram of gold guaranteed in the bag. So, you know, 70% return on investment, not terrible, right? You don't want 50% or lower. That's usually not that great, you know? So it's up, I mean, it's up to the buyer. And then plus I have the seven different levels of difficulty, you know, starting at discovery bags, which really isn't even panning at all, even though there is gold in it, but you don't have to pan it out. You could just look for the gemstones, difficulty one, right? Beginner bags, difficulty two. It's, you're supposed to pan it out, but there's no black sands in it. It's real light material. And it's just big chunky pieces of gold that you're going to find in a beginner bag. There's not a lot of gold, but you're going to find it, right? Um, and then I could go through all the different pay dirt products and what makes them the difficulty levels that they are. 
but you can see all that stuff on kleshgold.com. Um, yes, I do have energy. I, yeah, I just, I, I rarely sleep. I sleep a couple hours a night and I'm not happy until the job is done. Let's just put it that way. Joni. Oh, I really think that shelf idea is great. I can't wait to see how it looks. Yes, you're going to, you just saw it in today's video. Hopefully I'll just put yay. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the comment, Joni. Donovan Dagenhart, hey, when you buy gold, do you have a preference size wise or does it matter? I have stuff I'm working up that flower gold wizard would appreciate exactly with that flower gold. Have you been, have been to your page but figured I'd ask specifics? Yeah. So if you want to find out if I'll buy your gold, just go to clutchgold.com, click on the sell your gold button, follow the instructions, and I'll send you a free quote. But yeah, I'll buy any size gold as long as it's natural gold, flower gold, pickers, 50 gram nuggets, whatever you got. Tarnished Viking, getting her done. You got that right. Every day. Spencer Prospecting is definitely getting there. Looking good. Thank you, Spencer Prospecting. I appreciate that. Peas Doc, I think that's a great idea with the shelves. Now grabbing pay dirt bags will be easy for you and everything is organized. Let's get to the real part of the video. That crab place looked awesome. Putting paper down and eating right off the table is genius for a restaurant. You do that at home but have never seen it in a restaurant. Dude, that was really good. It was the medium original Cajun, medium spiciness original Cajun sauce that was on it. It was one pound of the blue crab. I got a blue moon with it and some corn on the cob. It was pretty awesome. And it was like, it was $35, which is actually very affordable for a lunch in Denver. So not bad at all. That was the um, crawling crab. It wasn't Littleton. It's Lakewood is where that is. GDNS, that crab looks amazing. Reminds me of eating blue crab on a table covered in newspapers in Maryland. I think your shelf idea is a winner. Yeah, I think so too, man. I think so, too. It's working really nice. Heather is on her way home. She just drove her friend to the Denver airport. She's coming back home. It's an hour to get out there, an hour back. So she should be home hopefully soon. And she'll be able to see that shelf for the first time. I didn't send her pictures or nothing. So we'll see her reaction. I'll probably have to change everything when she gets back. Oh, I don't. I don't. That ain't good enough. Okay. Well, time to, time to upgrade. Pandela's Village, always better ideas come in head after you build first thing and started working and realize that you can do some upgrades. That's always how it works. MS, welcome back, MS from Norway. Deb A, how about MS's idea to use candy food dispensers for the gems? That would be pretty awesome, actually. That would look awesome. I think it would make things easier for you too. line them up on a lower shelf and leave room so you could refill from the top. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, and then MS on Patreon sent me a picture. It's not the candy dispensers that you put a quarter in and you turn the thing. It's those plastic bins that you see at like Whole Foods. If you're from the United States, um, it's just like plastic bins that, you know, at Whole Foods, they usually have like nuts or grains and stuff in them. Those type of things. That would look pretty good, but I think we, I think we got this, the solution today. David John Fish, that's just amazing to me. You, I, inspires me to get a little pan to check out the rivers here in Wales, UK. I have found nothing yet, but it's awesome trying to, just trying panning gravel. It's awesome in the hope of seeing a shiny flake. I love to find some Welsh gold one day and maybe even get to send you some of I ever get lucky. Awesome, Shane. Thanks for introducing me to this amazing hobby. Hey, David John Fish. Yeah, Welsh gold is very famous. As you know, um, the Queen's crown is made from Welsh gold. And I've never been to Wales. I've been to the closest I've ever been to Wales, I think, is London. London. Yeah, like West London. So I. I, I didn't even make it over to Stonehenge, which is on the way to Wales. Next time, I'll definitely have to make my way over there. I know there's awesome castles and stuff in Wales. It's just a part of the world I have not been to yet. Steve Conroy, Shane, why don't you either paint 
or have someone paint a picture of a Clash guitar over the panel. That will save you from the code people. Besides, it would look cool this in your new shop. You do a way better at my chosen profession painting than I ever could at yours, Luthier. I can't wait to watch you build, watch your first build at the new shop. Hey, Stephen Conroy. Yeah, I also thought about drawing, like, I do oil paintings too. And I was thinking about, like, on this wall over here in the other room, just making a big mountain, like, like landscape thing. I, the the mountains that I paint are like the Bob, the Bob Ross type. Heather's here. I just heard her come in. Hi, Heather. How do you like the new shop or the new uh, shelf? No comment. I guess I'll be upgrading it. Um. So so Christian Jim Jim Bob, did you ever go to the Rice N W Rice Northwest Museum of Rocks and Minerals? It is in Washington. County Hillsboro, Oregon, just west of Portland. I have n I didn't even know that existed, but I certainly will check it out next time I'm up there. Mark Faust, can't wait till mine shows up. Thank you for your order. If you ordered a, a gold nugget, it will be there hopefully sooner than later. It'll be there in a couple days. We sh we ship same day every day. So if you're in the U.S., it'll be there soon. Scarlet. Tardis, that was a lot of bloody gold nuggets, mate. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I only sold maybe 10 of them since yesterday. So there's still like 90 of them left. Nuggets by Grant is here. What's up, dude? Killing it in the, the nugget game. Clash, way to go. Nuggets by Grant, guys. If you don't know who Nuggets by Grant is, am I pointing the right direction? That's Grant. And... uh Every time, like, I almost met the guy, like, twice at the Bitcoin conference down in Miami last year. He was there, but I, but, and because Dave from Gold Bay was there, too. And he's like, hey, Grant's here. I was like, really? I got to, I want to meet him, right? But we never met up, or I don't even think he knew that I was there. But anyway, definitely go check out Nuggets by Grant. He sells gold nuggets as well. He's, he's, he's given me, he's the guy that gave me the biggest gold nugget that I own, the Australian lightning bolt. It's like a giant gold nugget like this big. And it's like my prized thing in my treasure collection. So, uh, you've probably seen it in previous videos. Okay. I'm talking way too long here. We still have some more comments to go. Aaron Lagos at 415. You have a critter trying to escape the gold pan. We do. Where? I have... 415. Oh, I do see it. He's right there. It's like a little yeah, fly or something. Anyway, cool. Good eye. Justin American really likes these daily videos. Yeah, man, I like them too. And I, I um, the reason I'm making them is number one, it's for my own, uh, for archival reasons. So if I want to know what I did on June 26, 2022, I'll know exactly what I did, where I was, what I was doing, how long it took me to do that. And, uh, it, yeah, it'll help. I'll never be able to forget anything ever again, basically, except if the camera's not rolling. And also, of course, to show my friends and family, uh, on that that prefer that would that like watching it on YouTube. Daryl Adams, those bolts are called toggle bolts. Used to use them a lot when I did electrical work. Thank you, Daryl, and thanks for your order for the gold nuggets. I met Daryl down in Miami last year at that Bitcoin thing, and uh, we went out and got some lobster rolls and had some uh, sodi pops there in Miami. Donald Scott, looks like you're using a quarter inch or five sixteenths toggle bolts. Another great video. Everybody is, is helping me remember what they're called. Thank you. Michael Padilla, looking good in my garage. Looks like an episode from Hoarders. Have my son and his family stuff in there from when he and family moved to New Jersey. Then all my daughter's stuff when she moved back after the divorce. When it's stuff when the stuff that my wife kept from her mom's house. After her mom passed, then the boxes me and the wife accumulate over 42 years of marriage. There are days I just want to rent a dumpster. Hmm, sounds like there's lots of treasures in there. 
King Loopy, all that looks easy. All that looks easy better than anything if come up with. Keep up the good work, Nuggets. Mmm, definitely. Michael says, over 100. Feel free to mix a couple of the extras into any bag I buy. Yeah, man, I did a lot of... I, Dude, when I made impossible bags and blast bags and strike bags and beginner bags and expert bags, I was just dumping gold in. I was like, oh, that's way too much. Just putting, I was putting in like three times the amount. For the next three batches of gold, of pay dirt that we do... We're, we're adding to a lot of the bags, like three times the amount of gold, plus like three times the amount of bonus nuggets. I just, do. we have so much overstock, especially of flower gold right now. I'm just dumping it in. So if you find a lot of flower gold, even in like, well, not beginner bags, but um, impossible bags and expert bags, there's some bags that have like triple the gold easy. Toggle bolts. Thank you for that. Aaron Brown, Fender Mod Shop would be amazing if they put another 5% effort into paying attention to the fine details. Yeah, exactly, dude. Wow, find the studs. Yep. Cheaper for PVC. There's no pressure. It will work fine and a lot easier to install. Just saying. Cheaper for PVC. There's no pressure. It would work fine. Oh, he's talking about PVC for the um, air compressor. Yeah, I thought about doing PVC. And I probably will for the duct work. Um, once I get to that point. Um, I'm not going to do metal duct work. Uh, but for the hoses, I already ordered the PEX. Hose, I'm doing PEX. I don't know if that's the same as PVC. I don't think it is, but it's pressure rated, and that should be here tomorrow before 10 p.m. So I'll, I'll show you guys how I'm going to run my airlines all over the place. Corb, you have not a clue how to do that the right way. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Oh, don't you love it? All right. Spencer prospecting. I like he's talking about the video where I did the easy patching drywall holes. Um you can't like now you can't even tell that there was a hole there. So how is it the wrong way? Or how is it not the right way? Spencer prospecting. I like the mason jar idea. Screw the lids to the top shelf and on the bottom just twist a jar on and off the lids. Wait. It's yeah, I, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I did get all the lids out. I just have to space them correctly. I gotta measure everything up. And um, probably that's where they're, they're going to end up. I still have to order the LED tubes for behind it. Um, so, yeah. Peladamo Heath, what's your PO? Would like to send you fan mail. So my fan mail address is um, 12081 West Alameda Parkway, Unit 141, Lakewood, Colorado, 80228. That is my UPS store. There's, um, I'll put the address in the description. Yeti Mountain Trading, nice nugs, bro. Great video as always. Happy garlic. Yeah, thanks, man. TJJR, Gibson is the Harley Davidson of guitars. They produce garbage and everyone will be sold. <laughs> they don't need to care. Truer words cannot be spoken. Gibson guitars. There's so many Gibson fanboys and I don't get it. It's the name Gibson. If you're a luthier and you look at these guitars up close, up close, every Gibson looks good from far away. But if you look at it up close like I did in that video, you'll be like, what the heck is this? Who put this together, a third grader? Mark Faust, I just love playing with my gold. Me too. Man, we got a lot of comments. Sorry for the long video. Apologize, And I also apologize for any ads that are coming up. If there are ads and they're annoying you, just get ad blocker. It's free. I use ad blocker. I never watch ads on YouTube. That's why I got rid of TV to get rid of commercials. But I have to have ads on here if I want to get paid. So, you know, it is what it is. 
GDNS. I love the sound of those nuggets hitting the table, especially the 10 gram nugget. Yeah, that thing's a, a chunk, man. Such a loud sound for something so small. You're a legend for putting up with all of our crazy suggestions when in your heart, you know what is best for you. Well, I just like thinking out loud, and that's basically what these videos are. So I kind of already know what I want. You're right. But it's nice to hear suggestions and know that other people are want like. If I didn't have the YouTube channel, I'd still be doing this stuff, but I wouldn't have all the suggestions. I wouldn't have pocket doors, right? I wouldn't, um, there's so much stuff that I wouldn't have if I didn't have suggestions from people telling me. I don't hang out with anybody. Nobody comes over here. Heather's here. She doesn't even, she doesn't want to have anything to do with the guitar shop at all. So it's like, it's good to have, um, interaction about you know sharing what i'm doing and then getting all this input it's great wayne atkins says nice randy lewis says i have several milwaukee 12 volt tools i haven't started on the 18 line yet oh man i'm old school and like the last time i was in a wood shop was like the early 2000s really well if you don't count my repair shop, I'm talking build a full scale luthier shop with table saw and big sanders. It's been like since 2007, actually, is 2008. Yeah, 2008, because that's when when dime bag got shot. I was still working there, so yeah, 2008, 2009 is when I when I. Uh, so yeah, it's been a while. Anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but oh yeah, back then. We were using like the Porter cable router. You had to plug it in. Every little tool, you had to plug it in. Now, I don't have to plug anything in except for my big tools, right? Like all my Milwaukee tools built this entire, everything that you see in this shop has been built with those Milwaukee tools. So yeah, I can't say enough good stuff about them. They're a little pricey, but they paid for themselves already, you know? Donald Scott always enjoys my projects. Thank you, man. Uh, Phil says, ideal bins, tilt plastic organizers for everything. Oh, I already read this, didn't I? Oh, yes. I read all these comments yesterday on yesterday's video. I'll go ahead and just heart them all while I'm on this account. I appreciate everybody watching today. It's been a long video, I'm sure. Um... What else do I have going on? I'm done for the night. It is 7.39 p.m. I'm going to go in, hang out with Heather. She is back. And we're going to hang out. And tomorrow I'll be back at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, let me know in the comments. And I will see you on tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching.